Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat number 62, featuring an interview with the lead designer of Planescape Torment, Mr. Chris Avalon. Now, the name Chris Avalon is probably familiar to you if you are a serious fan of the computer role-playing game. He was the lead designer of Planescape Torment, only one of the greatest computer role-playing games of all time. This was an epic game, real, a real true classic. I did an episode on it a few months ago. Go check that out if you haven't seen this game before. Uh, now, Chris has worked on a lot of other games as well. He's uh, worked on the Fallout games. He's uh, worked on Icewind Dale, uh, Baldur's Gate, Dark Alliance. He's the co-founder of Obsidian Entertainment, uh, the company that brought us Knights of the Old Republic 2, uh, Neverwinter Nights 2, and is uh, currently working on a new Fallout game uh, that has everybody really excited, at least all the fans of uh, role-playing games. And now I had a great conversation with Chris. He's got a lot of uh, great stories, a history that goes uh, way back. Uh, so without further ado, here is Mr. Chris Avalon. I never actually thought of myself as getting into game development. It was more that I just so wanted to be a game master and go through made-up adventures with rules. Uh, basically being able to play, play pretend and uh, use my imagination. And the idea that uh, someone had created a rule set for that with Dungeons & Dragons just totally blew me away. And then um, because none of my friends would ever game master any of the games, uh, I ended up doing all that. And then after that, I just wanted to do more and more game mastering stuff. And uh, when the opportunity presented itself to actually make money doing that, which took me by total surprise, I just went for that full force. Being a game master, there was a lot of there was a lot of pressure from the from the players to keep producing like new adventures like every week, and that was, you know, so you get home from school, you do your homework, and then you start prepping for the adventure. So it, to an extent, it sort of became work. Um, you learned a lot about uh, how to balance rewards for each play session. Like because we played only once a week, uh, the amount of rewards that people would get during that session, there had to be enough to keep them interested and enough ego stroking going on with their specific characters that it, it, they felt they felt important enough to keep returning session after session. Um, one other thing I learned too, and I think this is a positive thing. Um, is that it's really important to pay attention to not just the the mechanics the players use to build their characters like you know hey I'm the brick or I'm the tank or I'm the you know the the badass spellcaster or I'm the sneaky thief it's also important to pay attention to why they made the characters that way and ask them a lot of questions about what sorts of things do they as players see as being heroic in your pen and paper game like what sorts of things do they want to do like what really fuels their ego like what makes them excited to play this character and then as a game master um i sort of trained myself to examine every single potential angle of a dungeon and look for places where each character could shine and be special um just so that it's just a, just so that everyone felt like they were contributing to the adventure and the other moment in the sun and i think uh, that paid off pretty well overall you, you have to be able to make meaningful choices in constructing your character and developing your character in the game. That, that, that's the first part of it. The other part is the game has to react. The game world, dungeons, people have to react in meaningful ways to those character choices and how your character is developing. Um, I would even argue that uh, having a strong storyline in RPG is, is absolutely secondary or even tertiary to those things. It's the game system. It's allowing the players to develop and it's allowing them to see the consequences of that development in the RPG. And then most RPG players will form a stronger narrative themselves based on actions that occur in the game that have nothing to do with the, with the NPC they talk to or the big wow moment you threw at them. They don't care. Like, what they care about is their third-level dwarven fighter that was able to fight off those 20 orcs in a corridor with a ball peen hammer. And that's the story that gets them excited, and that's the story that they tell because they were able to pull it off with their character build and their game mechanics. And I totally respect that, and I'm fine. I mean, I'll still try and do a good story but chances are your experiences are going to trump anything i try and throw at you so i'm totally fine with that um i, I think some of the best moments i've had in role-playing games are the moments where um i couldn't tell what a good karma option was versus a bad karma option like i could you know i couldn't tell what evil or good was i just had to make a decision based on the information that i had and the fact that those decisions would panic me and get me more immersed I, it was always really important to me 
like I think a lot of uh, computer fantasy RPGs are modeled pretty strongly after Dungeons and Dragons. Um, which you know, of course, would, would would you know herald back to Tolkien and wargaming. So I guess there's you know, the other roots go back even farther than that. But the um, I think the a lot of the rule sets in terms of what stats um, RPG systems have, like uh, in some cases of how they handle the spell systems, what type of spells the players get. Like I think all those things you can see where they may have started in Dungeons and Dragons. Like I. I think the whole spellbook system uh, didn't last very long in today's computer game industry, but a lot of other uh, a lot of other elements of uh, pen and paper role playing games definitely have a strong influence in today's role playing today's computer role playing games. When I first started in the computer game development, uh, I didn't actually know that much about programming, although I understood. Uh, what uh, Hal Barwood describes as the if-then-else uh, series of conditionals, which means that I knew enough about scripting to make sure all the stories make sense. I think I was perhaps the stupidest guy in the computer lab. Uh, I went to this uh, this magnet school in Northern Virginia called uh, the Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology, and let me tell you, nothing makes you feel stupid or faster than being with about 900 other kids uh, that are clearly smarter than you. So it was a very humbling experience, and I definitely was not the smartest guy in the computer lab. But at the same time, uh, going to that high school gave me a lot of exposure to things like uh, CAD programs for uh, for architecture. So I, I learned how to like lay out levels in 3D. Uh, it gave me a lot of good strong writing skills. And the work, the sort of school day at that high school, uh, was so brutal that it sort of like uh, programmed me to have like a, a pretty strong work ethic for the rest of my life, which I sometimes wish I could relax from. But um, yeah, that's not going to happen. Uh, when I first started, uh, I started out as a very junior designer at Interplay uh, Entertainment, uh, working in their Dragonplay division, doing Dungeons and Dragons games. Uh, Dragonplay got rebranded into um, a more role-playing game subdivision at Interplay, and uh, Fergus Erghart, who's now our CEO at Obsidian, he uh, led the charge in that division and sort of uh, got a new round of RPG projects going and sort of completed up the ones that were still going on at Dragon Play. And then uh, as far as my career goes, it went from junior designer to designer, area designer, then lead designer. And there's just all sorts of designers in between. But uh, now apparently I've, I've reached the ceiling, which I'm absolutely happy with. And now I'm just creative director at Obsidian. Uh, there's a few. Um, the first one wasn't really a full role-playing game, but it was incredible. Uh, one was System Shock 2. Uh, I thought that game did so many things right that I almost consider it like a design doc for computer games. Um, in terms of actual RPGs, uh, I will say the first one that I loved uh, was uh, was Bard's Tale 2, and that really got me excited because basically uh, I could play as a player for once and not have to be a game master, and the computer would handle everything, and I could make up my own my own party of adventures and customize those. Um, some other RPGs that were really influential was um, I never played Wizard's Crown, unfortunately, but I played Eternal Dagger. And the amount of customization that SSI allowed for you building a party in that game, I thought was pretty incredible. Um, it was, you know, it's a little embarrassing, but like I had little like hand painted miniatures by my computer keyboard with all the stat sheets for all my characters, and you know, it's it's, it's the nerdly stuff you do when you lock yourself alone in your room and your mom comes knocking on the door for dinner. Otherwise, she doesn't see you for the whole day. Um, so uh, there was Eternal Dagger. Uh, Wasteland had a huge influence. Uh, Wasteland, uh, I thought, did things with regards to story and adventure locales that I don't think any game to date has really has really tried. Like there's there's adventure areas in Wasteland where like you go inside a, a an android's brain and use your intelligence to actually combat the various obstacles. There are things like that where just like, you know, for a, for a 2D like, uh, you know, turn-based game, like that was, that was pretty incredible. So it was a few of those. Like I had some console affairs like Chrono Trigger, for example. Um, there's a whole bunch of those, and I could I could probably go on at some length, but you know, naming naming four or five right there is probably probably enough. And that's all for this week's match chat. I hope you guys enjoyed that. A lot of great shows coming up. I got some wonderful interviews lining up. All kinds of great content. As usual, check us out at www.armchairarcade.com. You're gonna really like that site. Lots of forums and blogs. Lots of opportunities to get to know you better. Because I don't know half of you 
half as well as I should like, and I like less than half of you, half as well as you deserve. See you guys next week.